anything, Lord God, I must say thank you. I thank you, Lord God, for allowing me to see another day. I thank you, Lord God, for health, wealth, and peace. I thank you, Lord God, for your people that are assembled here today, Father, to receive your word. And Father God, I pray now, Father, that your people will see more of you and less of me. I pray now, Father, that your word will go forth with signs and wonders do follow. Bodies will be healed. Minds will be regulated. Strongholds will be broken. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Before we get into the message, I just want to Thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, my great pastor, Pastor Todd Foster, in his absence. He's in the Philippines witnessing, delivering, and doing God's work. I want to thank my beautiful wife. She's normally up in the top doing a recording, but I had suggested that she be down here today. And um, I just left it at that. And this morning she said she would be down here. So I thank her for that. Um, Wave your hand, baby, so everybody know who you are. All right. Hallelujah. I want to thank my children. You know, last time I was up here, I forgot to mention my kids, and they said something to me about it. So I said, I want to thank my children, um, my family. Always willing to support. My brother in law and sister in law drove up from Greensboro. My cousin and her new husband, newlyweds in the back, they drove up from Greensboro. My co workers, <laughs> hallelujah. I see three of my co workers, uh, Shundale. Andrew and Ralph. I've been inviting Ralph to church for probably about 20 years now. It's not that he hasn't been going to church. I mean, he goes to church, but he, he serves at his church, and um, so I understood that, but he said he was going to be here today, so I want to thank him for being there. Andrew and Shondell. Shondell always support, and Andrew told me he was going to be here today, and um, he's here. I want to thank God's son and his lady and his mom for coming. I just sent Shayla an invite yesterday. I just sent her a flyer. She said she would be here and she came. So I want to thank you for that. It means a lot for y'all to be here. And then my homeboy Byron. He always in the building. And I want to know I let Thank you for that. And then my church family for always supporting and always being here. Um, we've been all trying to minister in pastor's absence. None of us can get up here and do 
the job the pastor do, and none of us are supposed to get up here and do the job the pastor does. We come up here and give what God gives us, and I thank y'all for the support, and I try to support everybody when they're ministering. And, um, so now that we didn't got all of that out of the way, and we ain't got it all out of the way, because I see another face that I need to recognize, and Sonny, he here, he comes a lot, but his mom is here, and um, I want to thank her for coming out. She used to be a uh, co-worker of mine, too, but I told her she turned her back on us. She left and got another job, but we want to thank her for coming out, too. Amen? And then my parents has always been supportive of me no matter what I've done in life. They've always been supportive, but they've always corrected me when I was wrong. And I want to let them know I appreciate that. They've always been a part of my life, and I just take it for granted sometimes. But I need to let mom and dad know that I love you, and I thank you for your support. And then... I don't feel like I got to tell him he thank him for being here, but Chris, no, I appreciate him always being here. You know, he's a member here, but you know what I'm saying? He's still, I want him to know that I appreciate your support, brother. All right, now that we got all of that out of the way, I didn't introduce people. Everybody know who I am. Now I ask everyone to please don't see me up here. See God. Don't see me, don't hear me and miss God. Hear God and miss me. Amen? So the title of the message today is going to be Trust in God. Trust in God. Us as believers, we are promised a certain type of life by God's word. It is a certain level of life that we're supposed to live on as believers. There's certain things that we're supposed to possess. There's certain things that we shouldn't have to put up with as believers. God's will is for us to have a rich, fulfilling, peaceful, healthy life. That's God's will for us. Anything outside of that it's not God's will. Everything that we experience, everything that goes on in the world is not the will of God. There are some things that goes on that's not the will of God. There are certain things that happens in our bodies that's not the will of God. But we need to know the word. We need to know what God says about the situation so we can know what we are to possess. Amen? So God promised us good health. Um, can you pull up Psalms 107? Let's start at verse 20, please. Trust in God. Title of the message. God's word is for us to walk in good health. His word says he sent his word and healed them. And delivered them from their destruction. So if it wasn't God's word for you to walk in good health, why would he send his word to heal us? So let's establish that it's God's will for us to walk in good health. Amen. Next scripture I want to look at is 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. God's will is for us to walk in wealth. I know people try to make Christians feel bad for having money. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, that you through his poverty might be rich. Financial prosperity. It's God's will. Next verse, Psalms 29 and 11. Let's 
the Lord will give the Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. So God's will is for you to have peace. Not for us to stay up all night wondering about our kids. Not for us to stay up all night wondering how we're going to pay bills. Not for us to wonder about a doctor's report. God's will is for us to have peace. So if you're not experiencing any of those things, it's not because it's not God's will. So we probably are asking, okay, so why don't we experience those things? Why do we not see those things in our lives continuously? We don't trust God. It's that simple. We don't trust God. I like to look at faith as in two parts. Believing God said it. A lot of us will do that. We can find things in scripture. We can believe. It's, I'm, I wouldn't ask anybody in here, do you believe God can do this? And somebody in their right mind would say no. Do you believe God can heal you? Everybody would say yes. Do you believe God can save you? Everybody would say yes. Do, be, do you believe God can get you out of, out of debt? Everybody would say yes. Because nobody in their right mind can say that God can't do something. We will believe that God can't do it. But the problem is we don't trust God to do it. We believe that he has the ability to do it, but we don't trust that he will do it for us. So now you have the faith is working in two parts. It's one thing to mentally assent that one thing is in the Bible, but do you trust God to do it for you? Do I trust God to be a healer? Do I trust God to be a provider? Do I trust God to be a deliverer? Do I trust God to save my children? He can do all those things, but we're not trusting him to do so. Amen? Well, uh, belief and trust is the same thing. Uh, not really. Not really. Belief, to accept something as true. So I accept it as true that God can heal. That's the acceptance. I accept that it's true. That's what believing means. You accept it as true. Believing Jesus is Lord is believing the fact that he is Lord. Believing it is a truth that he is Lord and Savior. But do I trust him to be my Lord? Am I making him Lord or do I believe that he is just my Savior? See, we put limits on salvation. A lot of us can believe salvation to go to heaven which, okay, you're saved, you're going to heaven, but there is so much more to salvation than just going to heaven. See, I can believe he went to the cross for my sins to die so I can have the right to heaven, but do I believe that he went to the cross to die so I could be healed? Do I believe he went to the cross to die so I could be prosperous? Do I trust him in that area? Trust means to place confidence in, rely on, to commit to the care of. Do you trust in God? Let me give you an example for the ones that watch sports. I got to check y'all's face because some of y'all LeBron fans, some of y'all Michael Jordan fans, some of y'all Kobe fans. So we ain't going to use none of them because I don't want to have no argument because I know LeBron the best, but we're going to go on. <laughs> so we'll use Anthony Edwards for example. Anthony Edwards team Minnesota down by one. He believed that all of his teammates can make a shot. There is not a doubt in his mind that he believed that everybody on his team can make a shot. But do he trust them with the last shot. See, I can believe they can make the shot, but do I trust is going so much further than just believing? Oh, yeah, I know you can make a shot and you're in the NBA, but I don't trust you with the last shot. See, it's something on the line. I think Pastor used a couple of weeks ago about the tightrope. Dude going across, the, you see it in the circus, pushing a wheelbarrow across the, the rope. 
They ask, oh, how many of y'all believe that he can go across the road with the wheelbarrow? Everybody like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, which one of y'all want to get in the wheelbarrow? It's the difference between believing and trusting. Ain't nobody getting in the wheelbarrow. I know I ain't. That's what we got to, you believing? It's good to believe. You got to start believing with belief, but then you got to move over into trust. And that's where we're dropping the ball at. We're not trusting God with our lives. Let's look at Psalms 37, 4 and 5 in the Passion Translation, please. It says, find your delight and true pleasure in Yahweh, and he will give you what you desire the most. Give God the right to direct your life, and as you trust him along the way, you will find he pulled it off perfectly. Trust him to direct your path. If God says go right, don't go left. If God says give, don't hold back. He's not telling us to do anything that's not going to have a favorable outcome. To delight yourself means a high degree of pleasure or satisfaction of the mind. To delight, people say God will give you the desires of your heart. That's true, but we're missing the first part of that verse. It says delight yourself in the Lord, then he'll give you the desires of your heart. So we need to trust God in every way, everything we do. What job should I take? Trust God. Which way should I go to work in the morning? Trust God. What man should I date? Trust God. What woman should I date? Trust God. How should I discipline my kids for this? You got to trust God. Because as you trust God, the outcome will always be favorable. And that's where we're missing it as saved people. We're not trusting God. We think we know more about the situation than God does. And it's getting us in trouble. You know what causes us a lot of times not to go to God and ask for his direction on certain things? It's because we're looking at where we messed up. Because I know I messed up here, now I'm hesitant to go to God. Because I cut such and such out last week on the job, I don't want to go to God. So how long does it take for you to think God forgot about that you cussed him out last week? So you ain't going to go to God no more? That's, I mean, that's how our mind is working. Because nobody gets it right all the time. Nobody. Nobody gets it right all the time. So we got to stop letting the enemy trick us, condemn us, to stop us from approaching God about direction we should go in life because we feel like we're not living good enough to do so. All of us have sinned and came short of the glory of God. We all sin daily, whether we mean to or not. Now, it's the one thing to sin daily, and then there's another thing to live a life of sin. Those are two separate things. To live a life of sin is to wake up planning on sinning. But none of us get it right. So stop letting the enemy trick us to approach God. This is the first statement I want to put up. It says, I trust God because he's good. Not because I'm good. I trust God because he's good. Not because I'm good. So when you trust him just for who he is, then you will approach him about every situation in your life. You won't only go to him when you think you didn't live good enough to go to him. Somebody ain't prayed this morning because you worried about what you did last night.
Somebody ain't told God thank you this morning because you worried about what you did yesterday. You can't correct nothing from yesterday. You can only get it right today. God, I know I fell short, but I still trust you. I'm still going to bring it to you, God, because I trust you because you're good, not because I'm good. Psalm 71, verses 5 through 6 in the Amplified Classic. For you are my hope, O Lord God. You are my trust from my youth and the source of my confidence. Upon you have I leaned and relied from birth. You are he who took me from my mother's womb, and you have been my benefactor from that day. My praise is continually of you. See, we have to develop a relationship with God to be able to trust him. And that's why some of us don't trust him, because we don't know him. Let's put it this way. Y'all ain't been married all your life, so we're going to go on back to the days before you was married. When you met a female or a guy, did you trust them right away? I didn't. And they probably shouldn't have trusted me either. Why? I didn't know you. I don't know you. I don't trust you. That's with anything. Friends, you, you got now. I can trust one thing for sure. Marco will be late if we got to meet for breakfast. I know it without a doubt in mind. He's going to be late. But I know he's going to be there. But that's because I know him. Before I got to know his routine, damn, where Marco at? Damn, Marco late. Now I know. He tell me, bro, I'm going to be on time tomorrow. No, you ain't, bro. You're going to be late. <laughs> because I know him. I asked him, have you been on time? If one time we didn't met, have you been on time, bro? You're in church. Nope. But I know him. You got to get to know God to be able to trust him. If you don't know him, you can't trust him. You can't trust somebody you don't know. That was another statement, but I got ahead of myself. But you can't, you have to develop a relationship with him to be able to trust him. You can't trust whom you do not know. I can't trust God if I don't know nothing about him. I can't trust him to be a healer if I haven't read his word to say he's a healer. Or I can't trust he know what he's talking about is if I don't listen to him when he tell me to do something. I can't know what the outcome going to be if I don't listen. Pastor Patricia said last week, she said, how can you trust God if you never purpose to listen to him? I said, wow, that's right in the message. I told her I was going to use it. But just think about that. How can I trust God if I never purpose to listen to him? What are you praying to God for if you're not going to listen to the answer that he gives you? If you're going to God with all, already in mind with the answer that you want, you'll never listen to the right answer. Because any time is different from what you want, you're going against God because you ain't listening. God, I know what I want, but whatever you say, I'll do. Now I'm purposing to listen. Now I'm gaining that trust. Jesus said, not my will, but thy will. Jesus didn't want to die on that cross no more than you did. But he did it because he trusted God. He knew that in three days, three nights, he would get up again. That took trust. He knew who God was. He knew who he was. He, he, him and the Father one. He knew. But he had to trust him. He didn't want to go. 
I don't always want to say the right thing. I don't always want to do the right thing. I don't always want to go to the right place. I don't always want to get up in the morning and come to church on Sunday. Some mornings I want to sleep in. But I know if I get up and come in here and give God what he deserves, I can trust him to do the same for me. Next scripture, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. The Passion Translation. Say, trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions. Trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions. With all your heart, rely on him to guide you, and he will lead you in every decision you make. Become intimate with him in whatever you do, and he will lead you wherever you go. Trust in the Lord completely. What does that look like? What's left out of completely? Nothing. So that means I got to trust him with my life. I got to trust him with my health. I got to trust him with my finances. I got to trust him with my marriage. I got to trust him with my kids. I have to trust him completely. We must trust God. We can't keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. We out here doing the exact same thing over and over and over and we're expecting different results. We're going about life doing our own thing and we're expecting a different result. You can't get a God result from human reasoning. That's why we keep going through the same cycle over and over and over. Why every dude I get with the same way in the same cycle? Why every woman I be with, she act the same way in the same cycle? You're still coming off that same seed you sowed, and now you're stuck. How do you break cycles? How is a woman's cycle broken? A seed is planted. When a woman gets pregnant, a new seed, no cycle. That's how you break cycles. You plant a new seed. What is the new seed? The word of God. You're in those cycles because you keep using the world system trying to break that cycle. How about plant a new seed? I've been trying this 40 years, and it ain't worked. If you try it another 40 years, I promise you it ain't going to work. That's why I've been telling people, man, somebody been telling the same lie on you for 40 years. It ain't no lie. It's the truth. Ain't nobody will keep telling the same lie on you for 40 years. After 40 years, you done did it. I'm just going to be all, ain't nobody going to keep telling the same lie on you for 40 years. They might lie. A lie might last a little while, but eventually the truth going to come out. Same thing with cycles. You can't keep on being in the same mess and keep blaming God for it. It's something you got to look at self. I'm not trusting it. I'm missing it somewhere. I'm not trusting God somewhere. Do I trust God? Is that simple? Next statement, and I'm almost done. Not going to be up here long. But this is a powerful statement right here. It says, God can't bless who we pretend to be. Only who we truly are. 
You can't go through life acting like you all holy this, holy that in front of us because your life going to still be a mess. People always say, God knows my heart. You are absolutely right. I had a guy tell me that at work the other day. I ain't going to call no names since I got some coworkers in here. But I had one tell me that at work the other day. He said, God knows my heart. And I looked right at him. I said, you know what, God, he really do know your heart. I said, I hope you know that he knows your heart. We ain't fooling God. I would have been there. God knows my heart. Yeah, God knows you wanted to stay in the bed more than you wanted to be at church. I would have gave, but oh, God know you, want, you didn't want to give. See, we can't get blessed. on what well, We can fool people. We can't fool God. So you either trust him and get the results of trusting him, or you don't trust him and then you get the results of not trusting him. You can only be blessed by who you truly are. So if you ain't seeing no fruit in your life, stop blaming God. Check self. If my money looking funny every month, I mean, every month, you got to check self. Because God has set up a system where we don't have to want. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, and running over. So if you're struggling all the time, God can't bless who you pretend to be. If you're sick all the time, if you ain't getting no peace at home, all the time? It ain't God. God ain't waiting on us. He moving. A lot of times we sit around and think we waiting on God. God done done his part. We got to look at Seth in the mirror and say, am I trusting God? Am I trusting God? Yeah, God, I believe you said it. But do I think it's true in my life? See, I can stand before, I know God to be a healer. I tell them at work all the time, tell, I don't get sick. Hey, man, man, you coughing? I don't care what you talking about. I don't get sick. Same thing that got people laid up. Nah, I mean, symptoms come on me sometimes. I mean, it is what it is. But am I going to accept the symptoms or am I going to accept God's word? Am I going to speak that I'm sick or speak that I'm healed? God can't bless who we pretend to be, only who we truly are. We have to trust in God with our, own, with our whole life. So when the doctor report comes, doctor report, I heard what you said, but I trust God. Bank account looking funny, but I trust God. Kids acting up, I trust God. My spouse acting up, I still trust God. You got to know that you trust God. Loan officer said no, I still trust God. Eviction notice on the door. I still trust God. You got to determine, do you trust God or you don't? It ain't no in between. I trust God. And that's what we need to do. We need to look Satan dead in his face. Say, Satan, I heard you loud and clear. But I trust God. Don't act like you didn't hear him. Yeah, I heard you. But I trust God. I heard you loud and clear. But I trust God. And we need to get out of just believing God can do a thing. And start trusting that he'll do it for you. The devil believes 
He know what God is capable of. He's trying to keep us from believing. Amen? That's all I got. I tell you, I won't be up here long. I was up here last time I ministered. I was up here a little bit over an hour. I ain't even realized I was up here that long until my brother-in-law Chris told me. <laughs> he said, brother, you went a little long. I said, no, I ain't go long, man. I went up here about 30 minutes. He starts screenshotting time stamps on me. <laughs> so, uh, but seriously, though, um, we got to get to a point where we trust God. And not with just some things, but with all things. And, you know, I'm at a point in my life where I know God to be exactly who he says him to be. I mean, you can shake me on a lot of things. You might confuse me on a lot of things, but I know who God is. And I know what my life is because I know who God is. And I trust him in every area of my life. Sometimes I hear God and don't listen. And then I got to come back and say, God, ain't no need of me acting like I didn't know what to do, because I did. I don't always listen to God when he tells me to do something or say something. But every time I got to come right back around. Man, God, I missed you. I'm sorry. I was thinking the other day, I, I don't know if y'all know, but I bought a motorcycle a couple of months back. Um, Harley Davidson, and I, I got to the point when I get to the point I be wanting something. I just say, I'm gonna go and get some something. And then Marco worried me to get a bike to ride. So I'm, I'm, I want the bike. Praying about the bike. Believe the bike to be mine. But way back here. I hear God saying no. What I do? I went and bought the bike anyway. So I had the bike. I was riding. I enjoyed the bike. It was in the garage. I was doing this, doing that. It's not that God didn't want me to have a bike. He didn't want me to have that bike. So I sold the bike. Made more money than what I bought it for, so it was good. God still showed favor, even though I was hard-headed. I eventually came around and got rid of the bike. I ain't even tell brother that that's one of the reasons I sold the bike. And then, too, I got tired of seeing it sitting in the garage and me not riding. And every time I seen it, I seen all that money just sitting right there in the garage. So I sold it. But I said that to say this. When I woke up Monday morning, I had pictures sent to my phone from the guy that I sold the bike to. The guy I sold the bike to wrecked the bike. Hit a deer. Going 85 miles an hour. See, God saying way down the line. Now, see, if I wouldn't have turned around and got that thing right, would that have been me on the bike? But see, all my life, he's been faithful. And all of my life, he's been good. That's why I trust him. Hallelujah. You can't tell me that God is not faithful. You can't tell me that he's not worth trusting. Because I didn't try him for myself. And I found him to be faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. He is so, so worthy. 
I want to give an opportunity now for anybody that has been going through anything, sickness, lack, unrest, anything, anything that you've been going through, and you decide right now, okay, God, I trust you. I trust you with this sickness. I trust you with this financial situation. I trust you with whatever it is. I want to give you that opportunity now to come. I join my faith with your faith. And we'll trust God together. And God will show himself faithful. I know without a shadow of a doubt, God will show himself faithful if you trust him. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, we want to give you that opportunity to receive him as your Lord and Savior. Because until he's Lord and Savior, you can't reap the benefits of being his child. Yeah, God loves everybody, but he's only in covenant with his children. So if anybody would like to be prayed for, you can come now. We'll pray for you. If, if everybody is good, if you want to come after service, you don't want to walk in front of everybody. We have... Plenty of associate ministers here. If you're a female, you want to be prayed for, want hands laid on you, you don't want a man to do it, we have women ministers here. But what I don't want to see is you leave out of this building now the same way that you came in. Because you don't have to. You don't have to go out of here facing the same problems that you came in here facing. God is here and he's here to make a difference. You shouldn't come in the building on Sundays just because you ain't got nothing else to do. When you leave, your life should be better because God was here. Nobody want to come down? We ask everyone to please stand. Once again, thank everybody for coming out. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we come to you, Lord, right now, Father. First, before we ask you anything, Lord God, we must say thank you. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for your word that have went forth today, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that us, your people, are not only hearers of the word, but also doers of the word. And Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that right now we trust you. We trust you, Lord God, with our whole lives. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, because cycles have been broken. We thank you, Lord God, that strongholds that's not of you have been destroyed. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that bodies have been healed, minds have been regulated. Peace has came on your people. We pray now, Lord God, that you continue to be with us as we go throughout our week. We thank you, Lord God, for covering our pastor and chaplain down there in the Philippines, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, that favor follows them everywhere they go, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that miracles, signs, and wonders do follow them. Father God, we thank you for being with us. We thank you for staying by us. We thank you for covering us from all hurt, harm, and danger, seen and unseen. We love you. We praise you. And we give you all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Amen.